doing this? I think we're doing this. Can you say hello? Hi. Can you say happy end of the year? Happy year. Yes, right. Happy end of the year. <laughs> yeah, you don't press the buttons. Did you guys have a nice holiday season? Yeah. Yeah? How old are you now? Well, um, 100 to 1,000. 100 to 1,000? Yeah. How old are you, Thomas? Sunday. Sunday? No, you're two. <laughs> you're two. I'm All right. One, two, three, four. That's right. You guys have to get going, okay? Go outside and go play. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Can you say Happy New Year? Happy New Year. That's right. Happy New Year. All right. Bye-bye. See you. Have fun. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you. Go on. Go on. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. See ya. Please go. Go on. All right. Hello, everyone. I came into my office ready to do the show, and there's James, or there's Thomas over here, banging away on my computer. <sighs> Where's mommy? Mommy's doing her work. <laughs> hello. Are you going to be good now? Yeah. You're going to behave? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you say hello to everyone? Hello, everyone. How did so, you... I'm Paya. You're what? I'm Paya, so... <laughs> hey, how did your year go? We're going to have a 2020 wrap-up today. How did your year go? Don't, don't touch that. Don't to touch 2020. Yeah, how did 2020 go? Come here, get in the camera. 2020 was really, really, really bad. Why? Yeah, because. Because of why? Because of. Because of the virus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you miss your friends at school? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you still saw them at the park, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What do you have there? Show them. Is that a monster truck? Mm -hmm. Do you like its big wheels? Yeah. You like things that are disproportionately big? Mm-hmm. Hmm, okay. Um, did you have any coffee this morning? No. No. That's yucky. Yeah. What else happened this year? What else happened in 2020? Here, talk to them. They want to hear from you. What um, happened in 2020? So, we played and we had coffee and we had ch chocolate. You had chocolate? Yeah, I had chocolate. That's right. You had s'mores the other night, didn't you? Chocolate. Yeah? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you get anything good for the holidays? I got chocolate. You love chocolate, huh? I love ch a chocolate that I drink. Oh, hot chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, you had a little bit of hot chocolate. I love that. You love that? What else do you love? Um, Daddy Tisha. I love Daddy to eat. I love to eat Daddy. You love to eat Daddy? Yes, yeah, I do. Oh, you're funny. Kevin wants to know how old you are. Four. Four? You're a big guy. I cannot see you. Yeah. Mm. Dylan says he wants some hot chocolate, too. Do you like hot chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever read the book called The Daily Stoic? Yes, I did. Yes, you did? What did it teach you? It teach me uh, why I should say that to Daddy eat. Daddy, so I get to eat mommy and Thomas and Dama and I'm going to edit pool and I try and sing and I I drink hot chocolate. You went to Eddie's pool and you drank hot chocolate? Yes. And you... I ate that and I said I and I said I eat daddy. That is not what the Daily Stoic is about. Let me find it. Here, let's read a passage from the Daily Stoic, okay? Okay. We're gonna read a passage really quick. Okay. The learner is not taught, but burdened by the sheer volume. And it's better to plant the seed of a few authors than be scattered about by many. It's true. You don't want to be all over the place. Let's read something else. Today, yeah, so listen, listen. Today you'll be fighting for your goal, fighting against impulses, and fighting to be the person you want to be. Who do you want to be? Darth Vader. Darth Vader! Oh, come on, friend. Come on. I'm going to be Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Cultivate skills like creativity, independence, self-confidence, ingenuity, and the ability to solve problems. 
calm is contagious. Can we make your calm contagious, my friend? Well. <laughs> All right. You're having a good time. All right. Tell everybody bye-bye. No. Say Happy New Year. No, no. I want to talk with something else. You want to talk with them? Yeah. Yeah? So, do you drink fire? Fire? Yeah. No, you don't drink fire. <laughs> The other day, you don't know this, I was cooking salmon for you mm. on the stove, mm. and I don't know what happened, but it all caught on fire, and there was a giant fire in the kitchen, and only I saw it. Don't tell your mommy. If she saw that giant fire, she would have flipped out. And then the smoke alarms went off, and I had to open the windows, and there was fire all over the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But don't worry. It was okay. Then who cleaned up the fire? I cleaned up the fire. You didn't do it. Yes, I did do it. Oh, you didn't? A fireman had to put out the fire. That's true. The firemen normally put out the fire. Yes, they do because they have to walk. Yeah. Do you really know I eat daddy a whole time? You keep saying this. You're going to give people the wrong idea. People don't know what you're talking about, and I don't really either. And Uncle eat daddy, so this is something like I do. So I try to pull G in my mummy, and I punch mommy, and I kill mommy, and I do that. No, no, that's not good. You're a good boy. It You're a good not. boy. You're a good boy. How was your holiday? Good. What do you want to do next year? I want to hang out and drink hot chocolate the whole time. You want to hang out and drink hot chocolate the whole time? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I love hot chocolate. All right. I have to talk to everybody about my 2020 wrap up, okay? I'm going, I'm not, I want to talk to 2020 wrap up too. Well, tell them. You got to tell them what happened in 2020. Talk talk about school. Um, what did you learn this I, year? Um, I teach her for race learning, and I cannot tell them what I do. I tell them what I do, and I am a table captain. You're the table captain? No, I'm not. You are the table captain, indeed. James had this problem where the teachers would say, um, let's say, dolphins swim in the water. And James would say, no, they don't. He thought he knew more than the teachers, but he doesn't yet. Maybe he does, actually. But uh, maybe he does know more than a few. Yeah, what about dolphins? Do you know anything about dolphins? No, I don't. No, you don't? Yeah, I don't know much about dolphins either. They're mammals. Uh -oh. Did you know that? No. All right, listen, I got to get to my show. I've let get, you talk for nine minutes. Can I get to a show too? You may not know this, but it takes a lot of skill to carry a talk show for an hour. And I'm not sure you possess that it yet. It's close. Yucky. It takes a lot of skill to carry a talk show for an hour. I listened to Jerry Seinfeld say that today. He was on to the Tim Ferriss podcast. I listened to that this morning after you woke me up at 6 a.m. Hey, Thomas, what's up? What can I do for you? Look. What can I do for you? Look, can you close the door? No, I, you guys have to get out of here. You're going to go outside and play. Oh, brush teeth, stop please. pressing the buttons. Oh, got to go brush your teeth. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Say, bye -bye. Bye -bye. say, say bye -bye, happy new year. Bye-bye. Say happy new year. Stop touching the buttons, Thomas. Say happy new year. Happy new year. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. 2020, the strangest year, says Jonathan. Indeed. Thank you for putting up with the children for nine and a half minutes. Hope you're having a great day. Today, I was just going to give a brief wrap-up of my 2020. You all can tell me about your 2020. We can discuss it. And um, we'll go from there. If we run out of things to talk about, I have a package of poker cards, and we'll open these and discuss stories from the people in these cards. All right, all right. Just wait till the kids hit the teenage year, says Kevin. I can't wait till those kids become teenagers. That way they can have their own shows and they can do their own thing. They can get a, get a job and, and pay for everything. Children are great, indeed. Do they want to play poker? Um, We played Go Fish slash other card games, but no poker yet. All right, so what happened in 2020? Well, COVID happened in 2020. The year started off fine and great. I went to um, Nottingham for the Party Poker Live tournament there at Dust Till Dawn. It was great fun. I did great online there. Won like 60K in a weekend playing online tournaments. That was a good weekend. And then COVID happened. Actually, COVID didn't quite happen yet. COVID started happening. And then um, 
I perhaps semi-foolishly went to Vegas for a company retreat slash the Global Poker Awards. We won this. The Poker Personality of the Year Award for 2019. We won this at the Global Poker Awards. Those took place in March, early March 2020 in Las Vegas. Everyone was there. We all, uh, well, at least I, I was aware to not shake people's hands. Most people know this. We, uh, I don't think anyone knew that COVID was what COVID would end up being. And that was my, my last major trip for quite a while. Well, my last trip, really, for quite a while. Um, before COVID, I don't know if you all know my schedule, but my schedule was roughly uh, travel about one week per month to go play a live tournament series, then come home and work on PokerCoaching.com for about three weeks. It's what I did for you know, previous two or three years, um, since I had kids, right? I had, I knew I wanted to be able to figure out a way to stay home, help everybody while I was staying home and have children, right? I did not want to be traveling, playing poker full time with kids because then you don't get to hang out with your kids, at least not nearly as easily. So that was my routine. I'd play poker about one week a month. Wasn't really playing much online unless I was out of the country. And then I would be home for about three weeks. When COVID happened though, I started playing on Sundays and it went um, pretty great. I think this year we won eh, roughly 120K in online tournaments, mostly tournaments slash some cash games. And that's just playing half days on Sundays. I think I would sign. If I put in a one fourteenth of my work time playing online poker and I can make 120K, I guess I'd sign for that. No real big wins. I think biggest win was like, 50k or something but um you know nice nice consistent grind I, I put in pretty pretty good volume in the time that i did play and um so online poker went well so that was that was good turns out when you play much smaller online than you do live because live will be playing you know five thousand dollar buying tournaments or twenty five thousand dollar buying tournaments live compared to 200 to 2500 hundred dollar tournaments online roughly that results in you just having way less variance. And um, like I didn't, didn't have any substantial downswing, which is probably lucky. That said, I do think that the games are substantially softer currently compared to pre-COVID, probably because all the recreational live players or a lot of the recreational live players are playing online now, right? So anyway, that's that. Pascal says, no big wins, only 50K, LOL. I mean, you got to realize I'm putting in $10,000 or $15,000 in volume in that half day on Sunday, right? So if you're putting in $15,000 in volume and you quote unquote only cash for 50K, it means that I only like doubled my money on most days. If you think about it, double or triple the money, which is fine. You know, nothing wrong with doubling or tripling your money. But a lot of people, like, like I did not have any great success in any 5Ks or 2500s that I played. Um probably like roughly break even in the 5Ks and 2500s I played. And if I had ran hot in those instead of breaking even slash losing in them, then, you know, we could have easily had a plus 250K day, right? So it's important to realize that. Um, so anyway, online poker went pretty well for me. Um, because of COVID, I got to stay home with my family a lot. That was a blessing in disguise to some extent. I realized COVID was clearly a terrible thing for basically everyone. Um, it probably hit me less hard than it hit most people, um, just because of the way my life was already set up, right? I, I had life set up to where I could work from home. I knew I wanted to stay home with my kids a lot anyway. And so if I was going to be staying home with my kids anyway, then it's like not a whole lot actually changed for me. Um, so that was very fortunate for me. I realized it was very unfortunate for a lot of other people, which is why we made a point to give away a lot of money to the poker community over the last year. We're actually giving away $500 to 10 different people. So 5,000 total right now. Check that out at pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. I think that's still available. Maybe over by now. I don't know. Check that out, pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. We're giving away 5,000 bucks sometimes very soon. Um, and uh, I think we gave away 40 or 50,000 bucks this year roughly, just in giveaways and whatnot to you all, to my followers. So I hope you all got in that. Hope you enjoyed it. 
Hope you um, made made use of that. And I realize we're in a fortunate spot, so we want to do our best with that. Like I said, I was home a decent amount of the time. And one thing I wanted to make sure I did this year was substantially grow poker coaching, my training site. And uh, we did a few things to really, really up its profile over the course of this last year. I knew I wanted to make the biggest course on tournament poker that existed, the most in-depth, most all-encompassing, really like everything you would possibly need to succeed at tournaments. And I did that. It was a lot of work. My tournament masterclass, you can check that out at pokercoaching.com slash holiday sale if you want to um, get that at a relatively cheap price. And it's long. It's about 30 hours of um, classroom type content with quizzes, uh, usually like a five or 10 minute video, then a quiz right after it. Five or 10 minute video, quiz right after it. Turns out that type of active learning goes a long way to making sure you actually learn what you're doing as opposed to, you know, watching someone stream poker and you having a beer and watching Netflix on the side. So I made a point to try to make that very, very interactive. And the students are doing great who are actually making the point to go through that, which is, which is good, right? Um, also, we hired a bunch of new, very, very high-level coaches. I see James Romero in the chat here in, on Instagram. Hello, James. James is one of our world-class coaches we hired recently. He was one of the top 10 live poker players before uh, COVID happened, and he's an absolute crusher. So that we hired him. We hired um, Jonathan Jaffe, another very, very strong poker player who's been crushing for forever. Faraz Jaka, he was World Poker Tour Player of the Year a while back. So was I. So we have two WPT Player of the Years. Um, we hired Tommy Angelo recently, who is like the mindset expert in poker. We hired Brad Wilson, world-class cash game player. He also has a great podcast called Chasing Poker Greatness. Check that out. And um, a bunch more. We hired a, uh, quite a few coaches over the course of the last year. And, um, you know, it costs a lot of money. It takes a, a bit of effort to manage all of that. But I'm happy to do it for all of you. Oh, we hired Draft Ganger. Forgot about him. Um, he's num number one online player in the world a year or two ago, playing the super high stakes currently. So he cashed a $10,000 tournament on GG again yesterday. He cashes that thing all the time. He actually reviewed it recently with Michael Acevedo, um, where they reviewed his $400,000 win. They went through that over the course of about four hours. They reviewed all the major hands that he played in that. So make sure you check that out if you're a Poker Coaching member. Again, get that at PokerCoaching.com slash holiday sale. Um, we now have over 1,000 quizzes at Poker Coaching. It's a lot of effort. All these quizzes take 20-ish minutes to make each. You do the math, 20 times 1,000 is 20,000. It's a lot of minutes. What's 20,000 minutes? What's 20,000 divided by 60? It's a decent number of minutes the poker coaching coaches have spent making these for you. We also have, uh, I think, over 320 minute videos on topics that you asked us to make content about, right? So it's like a giant encyclopedia of everything you could possibly need to beat poker. So I'm very, very happy with poker coaching, the way it's going. Uh, memberships basically doubled over the last year. And um, that's great. I mean, that, that's what we're going for. Louis Philippe said, you love the last Draft Ganger stream. Yeah, he broke down a lot of the final table spots. I think he took second place in a $2,500 tournament on stream. He streamed it for six or seven hours. Uh, took second place in a 2500 I remember watching it. Uh, he was down to like six people, and he never really had a chip stack at all. He just kind of played tight. Took a free second place. Taking a free second place is usually pretty decent. Um, what else? Um, I've done a lot of other stuff for the site that has not quite come out yet. Um, one of my students, Gershon Destinfield, final table the World Series of Poker main event. He plays that today, starting in uh, six or eight hours in Las Vegas. That's pretty cool. He, with any luck, will have a poker coaching patch on. That'll be good. Um, I got to make one-minute strategy segments for the show Poker After Dark. That was my only other trip this year. We, I think it was the only other trip. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Anyway, one, that was another trip this year uh, to Vegas. That was a lot of fun. Um, we played a poker coaching sit-and-go with poker coaching coaches. Getting lots of TV time, you know? Turns out TV time is um, either valuable or it's not, but it was a lot of fun making it, and we got to um, produce a lot of content. I have one-minute strategy segments, segments and a lot of the... Poker After Dark episodes. I actually have to go through and watch the most recent episode of Poker After Dark to make sure there's one in this most recent episode. But anyway, that is all good. Lots of poker coaching stuff happened this year. We really did expand a ton. 
Um, what else did I do? I invested in 30 more startups. You may all not know this. I invest in a lot of startup companies. And you may say, why? Why invest your money in something that is high risk, high variance, may not pay off for quite a long time, probably won't pay off for quite a long time. And the reason is, is that I recognize there are a lot of people out there who are actively working to improve the world and they are very, very motivated to change the world. And a lot of these people do not have the financing they need. And not to be fair, I'm not writing any sort of gigantic checks or anything, but it's fun investment. Also, it helps me learn a lot about business, right? I have no formal business training whatsoever. Um, so learning from people who are running succeeding businesses is always quite valuable. Um, some companies that are doing well, uh, one's called Fitbod. It's an app for your phone that you use to work out. Probably some of you use it. They have loads and loads of subscribers. Um, it's like a training site, right? Training site is uh, something I should probably learn from, ones that have more members than me. So Fitbod's a training site that I own a little tiny piece of. There's also one called Steezy, training site that teaches you to uh, work out. Uh, not work out, to dance. Uh, that's pretty, pretty neat. I don't do any dancing, but I know a lot of people love dancing. There's another one called um, Fluent Forever. It's like a good version of Duolingo. I... Uh, I've always wanted you to learn another language. It's on my to-do list to actually get in there and use it. Um, they have great, great results so far with their students. And I'm all for like any sort of training programs that teach people to get better at a life skill that will help them forever. And um, investing in startups or at least, you know, training sites help with that kind of thing. There's all sorts of other startups we invested in. I think I've made about 90 investments total over the course of the last four or five years. I learned about this through a guy, Jason Calacanis. I actually randomly met him um, at a book launch party at Sheryl Sandberg's house for Phil Helmuth's book um, that I helped publish. I, well, I guess, call it an angel investment. I'm a part owner of a poker publishing company, D&B Poker, and it's my job to curate content. So I thought, let's get some poker biographies going. Who are the big names in poker? So we got Phil Helmuth, and they had a book launch party there, and I met a guy, Jason Calacanis, who I actually already listened to his podcast called This Week in Startups. Um, I started investing a lot with him and you know meeting other people through him. I've met a bunch of other angel investors, venture capitalists, et cetera, through that one connection. If you want to learn about angel investing, he has a book called Angel. Check it out. How I turned 100K into 100 mil. Probably worth more than 100 mil now. So anyway, check that out. I think it's important to realize, though, that a lot of people do not really want to do the work. They want to sit back and watch their Netflix and chill and relax, and that's it. And you don't really better the world or better yourself by not actively doing the work. Some people are, do even worse than that. They spend their time doing things that are detrimental to themselves or to others. Like um, some people spend their time posting nonsense on the internet, right? We've seen that a lot this year. Um, there, there have been random Jonathan Little haters on the internet who don't like the fact that we are helping people improve their poker and their lives. And that's okay, I get it. I mean, everyone is not going to like you, but the people who spend their time doing such things are straight up wasting their lives away. And... I want to make sure that I'm actively helping the people who want to improve their skills, whether it be poker, life. Pascal says, download to Steezy right now. He's going to try to learn to dance. There you go, right? And that's good. Maybe you'll find a new hobby or a new passion that will help you enjoy life more, right? Kevin says, your New Year resolution, more poker study starting today. There you go. We're actually going to be discussing that next time, how to make 2021 your best year yet. Biffle says, you love this podcast. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. But the people who often are motivated enough to give up a potential reasonable job that pays good money to go start a project, like a passion project that they really, really care about, 
and it can be on any all, all sorts of things. Like um, there's a company I invest in called Blockable. They make um, like modular housing. Think uh, like those stackable storage units like you see on a boat, you know what I mean? Except for small houses. And you can make the small houses into big houses. And people are passionate about that kind of thing, right? These people could be building mansions for rich people. Instead, they're building lower income housing for people who are trying to improve their lives and get in a better spot, right? And I'm happy to help with that kind of stuff, right? So you want to you wanna find people who are really, really passionate about the things they care about and they are trying to help others is what it amounts to. And if you spend your effort and resources to help others, that makes that's going to make you feel generally good about yourself and what you are doing, right? So get in a spot where you're already doing fine, and I'm, I'm already doing fine. And then from there... Help others who want to get in a spot to help others. And you just continue improving the world, right? You help other people. They improve the world. Hopefully they get rich. They use their money. They help other people who want to improve the world. We keep turning it over, over and over and over and over and over again. And the world improves. And that is what we're going for. Steve so says, do we have any articles on bankroll management? Yeah, check out pokercoaching.com slash bankroll. There you go. The Bankroll Bible. It's actually completely free. You don't even have to be a member. It's completely free because I want to make sure you all don't butcher your bankroll. Turns out, if you give away your bankroll, you're going to have a hard time winning. If you play too big, you're going to have a hard time winning. If you're playing games that are too tough, you're going to have a hard time winning, right? This applies to all things in life. So anyway, invest in a bunch more startups this year. The tough thing about startup is investing is that you know when you put your money into a small new company, you're not going to see that money for like five years at least, maybe 10 years or longer. So it's not an investment for everyone. That said, I really love the idea of locking up money now, letting people who are motivated and hardworking work with that money for the next five to seven years, and then we'll see what we're looking at. That is not for most people. Most people, when they invest, they want their money to be very liquid and to be sure or to, uh, to be clear, you do want your money to be very liquid in general because you want to have access to it, right? A big mistake I made when I first started playing poker is I used a large chunk of my money to buy a condominium. And I eventually went on a downswing and I wish I had that money. But I couldn't really get it unless I wanted to sell my condominium, which would be a big pain, right? And... You got to make sure that you're in a scenario where you don't really need the cash for a long period of time, right? And if you do need liquid money, you should definitely be investing in things that are, well, way more liquid, right? Like um, stock market or something like that. Uh, that said, whatever you do, if you don't want to go broke, make sure you are very, very diversified, right? Um, you want to ideally make sure you do not get crushed by any sort of catastrophic downturn in one particular market. Um, a lot of my money is in a thing, a program called Wealthfront. They are basically a robo-advisor that invest in everything. And if you invest in everything, some things go up, some things go down. On average, though, things go up across the board and you make money on average, right? Which is all you really care about. It's kind of like whenever you back poker players. If you're backing poker players, you don't want to back one poker player. You want to back a whole bunch of poker players. That way it's like you playing a whole bunch of tournaments. If you have $10,000, you don't want to play one $10,000 buying tournament. You want to play a bunch of $50 tournaments. And then you just win every time. You're not going to 25 times your money overnight, but you're going to win every time. What's that housing company called? That's called Blockable. What's the investing company called? Wealthfront. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Most new businesses fail. Indeed. Most new businesses fail, which is why you have to make sure that you play the investing game kind of like you play the poker tournament game. You want to make sure you are properly bankrolled. So many people make the error of thinking, all right, I have um, $25,000 to invest. My buddy down the street has a startup. Let me go give him the $25,000. It's not a good strategy. 
Um, fortunately, now we live in a world where you can invest in, you can invest small amounts, right? Like you can invest with Jason Calacanis, the guy who I invest a lot with. Um, there's a site called AngelList where you can find all sorts of investments. Um, a lot of time they have kind of high minimums, well, kind of high, depends, it's all relative, but they may be $1,000 minimum, $2,500 minimum, $10,000 minimum, depending on who you're investing with. But um, if you have, let's say, $50,000 a year that you know you're going to profit and you want to lock that money up and you know you don't really want to touch it for seven years, putting that in 20 angel investments may not be such a terrible idea. That said, I'll obviously make sure that you have things like your retirement fund set up, make sure you have rainy day fund set up, et cetera, 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 et cetera right? Make sure you are well taken care of and don't lock up money that you don't necessarily want to lock up. That said, there's a whole bunch of poker players out there who would be way better off today if every time they had a big win for a million bucks, instead of keeping a hundred or keeping a million of it in cash or very liquid money, they invested 20% of it into something they could not touch for 10 years. It's what I did. Maybe randomly, maybe luckily, maybe my parents instilled that in me, I'm not sure. But every time I won a million bucks in a tournament, or more than 500,000 bucks, every time I won more than 500K, I'd buy a house. And I'd take that house and I'd rent it out. I eventually sold them because I needed money to buy my place in Manhattan. Turns out Manhattan real estate is expensive. But that allowed me to just have these chunks of $200,000 just hanging out, getting rental income, right? That I knew I wasn't going to touch, wasn't going to sell them. The plan was not to sell these things. The only reason I sold them is because I needed a pile of money to buy a place in Manhattan, which, you know, to some extent is um, also kind of an investment, if you call it that. Is your primary house an investment? And who knows? But it's still a pile of equity, right? And that is very, very relevant. Output says he saved half of every paycheck for about eight years and invested it. You don't work anymore. There you go. Good job, good work, right? It turns out if you make hard decisions now, if you do the hard work now, if you sacrifice a little bit now, you'll have a way easier time later than if you don't do the hard things now. Easy life now, hard times later. Hard times now, easy times later. Some of you are talking about other forms of investments like wine, Magic the Gathering, art, etc. I mean... Look, I'm not going to act like I'm an expert in these things. I am, to some extent, an expert in Magic the Gathering investing. It's only a good thing to do, in my opinion, if you are doing it for small-ish amounts of money. Small-ish amounts of money, sure. Big-ish amounts of money, probably not for Magic the Gathering. Um, i got to imagine things like wine and art are kind of similar. Unless you're an expert. If you're like a super expert and you're going to devote your life to it, then Sure. But if you're not a super expert and you're not going to devote your life to it, like most people don't, then it's probably not where you want to be, right? Wine is like poker players that you want to diversify. Yeah, of course. You want to diversify in everything. I mean, like right now, Bitcoin's going through the roof, right? And I have a little Bitcoin. I wish I had more, clearly, when it's going through the roof. But it's also going to go into the dumpster at some point in the future too, right? And... What happens to a lot of people is they make the big error of buying stuff when it's hyped up and then they sell stuff when it's forgotten. The problem is, is that's kind of the opposite you should do, if anything. The problem is you don't really know when something's at maximum hype or maximum forgottenness. But, like right now, um, so <laughs> there was someone, like a, a poker personality the other day, saying something to the effect of... We should be buying Bitcoin now because it's going up. And without like fully recognizing that it's it is it has already gone up a large chunk, right? When things have already gone up a large chunk, that's not it's like you kind of missed it already. And it's fine. You're allowed to miss stuff. Just because something exists doesn't mean you have to get in on it. Um, things like Bitcoin, like I said, I have a little bit. Not a ton. Right? Things like Magic the Gathering cards, I have a little bit, I don't have a ton. Things like angel investing. I'm probably a little bit overextended in angel investing. Um, what's How much is my net worth in angel investing? 20-ish percent? Probably should be like 5% in reality if you were nitty. But I'm not nitty, and I like helping the world. So even if it fails, we'll call it quote-unquote charity to uh, you know help other people who are actively trying to make 
products, services, et cetera, that better the world. I'm happy to do that. Um, I mean, think about this, right? Like imagine you come into a decent amount of money, either because you get lucky to get it or you worked your butt off for the last 20 years. And you have money sitting around. You don't really need it. Should you give that to other people who are working hard to better the world? Some portion of it, right? And they're not using it to like go have parties or anything. They're using it to like build products and, um, you know, hire engineering teams and whatnot to better the world. And if I think the answer to that's like maybe, right? It's I think it's I think it's the um, the quote unquote good thing to do to some extent. Is there any way to watch the main event today? Uh, yeah, one of my students, poker coaching member, Gershon Dessenfeld's at the final table of the main events. I think the only way you can get updates is on pokernews.com. I make videos for poker news every week. Did you all know that? I make strategy videos for poker news every week. Make sure you check those out. But um, you can get live updates on poker news, and then I think the TV show goes live at some point later on ESPN. Easy life now, hard times later. That's right. Hard times now, easy life later. Probably fun to watch the businesses you invested in as they grow. Definitely true. And I mean, um, a lot of the time if you invest with other people who are getting money together, because I'm just a small investor in a conglomerate to some extent, um, you you get updates, regular like monthly updates. So every month I get 50 updates or 80 updates from companies that tell me what they're doing well at, what they're failing at, what's giving them problems. That was really interesting to see during COVID because some companies like went to zero during COVID and some companies boomed during COVID. And it's interesting to see like what companies are in which spaces that allow them to do well, which ones are doing poorly, how are the ones that are doing poorly pivoting and making it out of there. And that's um, very relevant. You can actually invest with Jason Calacanis. He has a syndicate. I think the website is thesyndicate.com. So check out thesyndicate.com. Um, they do charge some vig to invest with them because well, they're doing a whole lot of work, right? I think it's probably well worth it. Kind of like if you're going to go back a poker player, do you want to back a regular guy off the street? Or do you want to back someone who has a very, very long proven track record? Especially in a game that is a positive sum game compared to something like, you know, a negative sum game or break a, an even, a even money game. All right. So anyway, 2020 has been an interesting year. Yeah, and I realize 2020 has been terrible for a lot of people, like an absolute disaster for a lot of people. Um, especially if you were in like the service industry or if you had any sort of physical world job. I realize 2020 has been terrible. Um, 2021 can only be better. I mean, it's tough. Like I don't have anything to say about that. 2021 is, was a, a heck of a time for anyone who worked in the real world. Um, Jonathan Little was very lucky that he worked in the digital world to some extent, right? And... Um, You gotta be fortunate for the things that you have. Um, so I've been pretty lucky. Sometimes you're lucky. Anyway, yeah, so COVID was rough. Online poker's been great for me. I'm happy with online poker. Couldn't be any any happier with it, really. Figured out a way to make it fit with my life where we just play one day a week for half a day. Great. Highest volume time. Just like I did with the live tournaments, right? I would go play the high volume live tournament series. Online, play the high volume live uh, online tournament days. Same thing. Poker coaching is doing great, amazingly well. I, I mean, this is going to sound pessimistic, but I am always wondering, like, when is this poker coaching site just going to stop working? Because I've been in the poker training industry for, gosh, since 2005, 15 years. I've literally been in the online poker educational space for 15 years. Successfully for 15 years. And you got to wonder, like, maybe we're just good at this. But as soon as you get cocky, that's when you get crushed. And so you can't get cocky. You just have to always continuously strive to improve. And poker coaching has continued to scale over the last, well, many, many years, which is fantastic. We said how many members you have. We have about 5,500 active members, which is you know solid number. I know Card Runners back in the day was the big training site. And I know they had 5,000 members at their peak. So there you go. Maybe we're doing it, maybe we're not. I, the, the tough thing about the poker training market is you don't really know how big the market is because if you look at some of the other sites, maybe they have a lot of members, maybe they have none. 
Who knows? I don't know. We don't discuss these things together. Maybe we should discuss these things together. I'm friendly with some of them. Maybe we should discuss with some of them. I have discussed with a few of them that I know, like it's kind of clear they're like not the biggest sites. I mean, in reality, there are only three very big sites now. It's Poker Coaching, uh, Run It Once, and Upswing. Upswing's in a very different kind of market where they try to sell you one expensive thing right up front, whereas uh, Run It Once and Poker Coaching are like similar in that we have a membership model with a lot of content. They do mostly um, static videos. We do a lot more interactive stuff, which I think is a big differentiator. So um, I think we are substantially differentiated from the only other giant training site out there that actively produces content on a very regular basis. C so says, raise your edges big. Raise your edges, a big one. I think it's, I mean, look, I, I only know from analytics that I've done from like search engine searching and popularity polls and all this stuff. Raise your edges clearly in fourth. But yeah, they're sol solid big site too. I mean, again, like I'm not trying to diss any of these sites. I'm just straight up telling you that, telling you the numbers, right? In terms of number of members, if I had to estimate based on volume of internet traffic, which is, it's gotta be somewhat indicative of, of members. Um, those are the three big ones. And you can, just, you can, you can all search all this stuff yourself in reality. Not the name, but matters again, right? Um, I, I don't know what a big site is though, right? I know a lot of the smaller sites have like a hundred members, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with a hundred members. Poker coaching had a hundred members back in the day and you got to start somewhere, but it's important when you're in business to know what the actual market is, right? Um, because poker coaching just continuously grows. And I got to think, there's only so many people in the poker world who care about getting good at poker, right? And it's always scary to me as a business person that at some point you, you kind of start reaching your, your peak in the market to the point that there are, no, there are no more people who want to get good at poker. So all you can do is continue doing good work and um, take market share from the other people which is what we try to do by hiring the best coaches, making many differentiated products. And um, well, we're continuing to improve and I think we're, we're doing pretty well. So anyway, life's great, poker's great, family's great, all of that's great. Hope everything goes great for all of you. Last year, going forward, etc. <sighs> How will the vaccine and the cure affect poker coaching? I don't know. Probably not much in reality, right? I mean, people play more live poker, but I mean, I've seen an uptick in my membership recently. Um, I mean, I guess we'll talk about business. When COVID happened, I saw a big uptick. Um, we gained like a thousand members overnight. It was wild. And I, I know from talking to the other training sites that I invest in, Steezy, uh, Fluent Forever, and FitBod, that they all had a similar spike. All training sites if you're anywhere near decent, had a spike at COVID. But then it like leveled off, right? So a lot of people got in at COVID time because everybody was stuck at home with nothing to do. So they, you know, people who want to work hard hopped into training programs and they improved. And then that number like leveled off and you're like, huh, we grew a lot. Now we stopped growing. What does that mean? And the answer is nothing. It means we just got like a bonus few months, which is why I turned around and gave, you know, $40,000 back to the followers of Jonathan Little over the last year because I realized like this spike is lucky, unnecessarily uh, gifted to me, and I'm not just going to take it and pocket it. I'm going to turn around and give it back to you, right? And um, anyway, well, how did we get on this topic? Oh, how, how will a cure affect poker coaching? I don't really think it'll affect it much at all because the thing is, is I know that once you sign up to poker coaching, if you actually use it, you're going to improve your poker skills. You're going to get better. And if you get better and you like the content, you're learning from it, you're not going to cancel. And if you don't cancel, well, clearly that's good for me, right? So you got to realize that whenever a business, like Jonathan Little's business here, provides an immense amount of value to someone to the point that it's way, way, way paying for the cost of the membership, they're going to be happy to continue subscribing, right? It's like easy as easy as it can be to some extent. Like, like any business, right? I mean, Take, take coffee, for instance, right? You like the coffee? Does it add value more than the uh, 28 cents it cost me to make this coffee? Okay, I'll keep drinking it, right? Worth more than 28 cents. So you drink it. 
Is poker coaching premium worth more than a dollar and change per day? If it's worth more than a dollar and change per day, as it will be for literally any poker player, if you play more than the tiniest stakes, you're going to sign up for it. <sighs> Does poker coaching help deal with downswings? Um, in theory, if you have a higher win rate, you will have less severe downswings. So yes. Do you have any Bitcoins? Yes. Fair and honest tournament poker site is my next venture. Ooh, I don't think I'm making a poker a poker site to actually play on. That's a big, big, uh, big effort. Um, Bill Galfon tried to make a poker playing site, and I know it's been a big pain for him, and I, I don't want to do that. It's important to learn from others. Sometimes people go and they uh, try to make something work, and they have a hard time at it in a spot where you think maybe it would be easy enough for them, and um, that's that's a good lesson. Everyone loves a benefactor. That's why Gershon Destinfield has so many of you rooting for him. Yeah, poker coaching member, Gershon Destinfield at the final table of the World Series of Poker main event today. I've been working with him a pretty good amount over the last week or so. And I um, think he's ready, ready and prepared to, to do his best. He tested negative for COVID, so that's step one. So that's good. When does it make sense to get private coaching? When you're seriously dedicated to improving your skills and you're going to put in a lot of time playing and studying. What's my outlook on Bitcoin? My outlook, Jonathan Lowe's outcoin on Bit, outlook on Bitcoin is irrelevant. Please recognize, most people, well, most people don't really know anything about anything, right? My opinion on Bitcoin is irrelevant. Sure, we have some, but I have a whole lot of stuff, right? What's my opinion on name a random stock? I don't know. I don't know. Smart people I know said buy a little bit of it. So we bought a little bit of it. There you go. Um, but you have to realize that your opinion on a lot of things does not matter all that much. My opinion on Bitcoin does not matter. I'm not a blockchain engineer by any means, right? Where did my book go? Did I move it? We ran out of room over here on the desk. Is this it? Eh, that's not it. Anyway. We've read a few Bitcoin books. <laughs> That's all you can do, right? Uh, let's see. Anyway, what do I think about Bitcoin? I think clearly anytime anything's getting hyped up a lot, it's probably going to go down. That said, I'm not buying or selling any. <sighs> see if you have any questions about charts or anything, send us an email, support at pokercoaching.com. There you go. Let's see. All right. We're at the end of the show today. We have 10 minutes left. We're going to open a package of cards, a package of Razor Poker cards from way back in 2006. We're going to open this pack of cards. I believe there are five, six cards in this pack. And we're going to give stories from the legends of the game. We'll talk about any of these people are still around. We'll see who we have. Oh boy, right off the bat. Super Showdown! Super Showdown! We have Greg Raymer versus Mike the Mouth Mattisau. Let me read this. From the 2004 World Series of Poker main event. While these two very different personalities of the game didn't clash at the final table, their play against one another in the 2004 World Series of Poker main event is one of the most memorable moments ever in televised poker history. ESPN masterfully crafted the constant battles between Greg and Mike at the feature table of the main event. Mike continuously took shots at Greg's stack, only to fall short as the Fossil Man eliminated Mike Mattisau. Uh, we'll keep reading. This event is even more memorable for the sheer emotion expressed by Mike Mattisau. With tears, he expressed the disappointment and pleaded that this was the best he has ever played. This is the best I've ever played in my life. Little did he know, he did know little at this point. He did know little. Um, little did he know he would be back at the 2005 and take home a million dollars with a strong showing at a final table. This event put Mike Mattisau on the map with the casual fan. This event also marked the recognition of a new superstar, Greg Fossil Man Raymer. He likes his fossils. Greg took home five million bucks for his hard work, while Mike took home a respectable but disappointing $20,000. One of them gets $5 million, one of them gets twenty k. Welcome to Tournament Poker, everybody. Who do we have next? Lane Flack. Lane Back-to-Back -back Flack. Do you all know Lane Back-to-Back -back Flack? 
Born 1969 in Rapid City, South, Rapid, Rapid City, South Dakota. Currently resides in Las Vegas, Nevada as of 2006. Tournament earnings, $3 million bucks as of 2006. That's a lot of tournament earnings back in 2006. Living life as fast as he plays cards. Well, that's a shot right there, right off the bat. Lane Flack is one of the most entertaining personalities in the poker world today. Flack picked up the name back-to-back -back after consecutive wins at the World Series of Poker. I think he's won bracelets back-to-back Two times. It's pretty lucky. Flack was introduced to poker while working at a casino, regularly playing after work. He later quit his job to concentrate his efforts on the game. Johnny Chan mentored Lane, helping him mature as a player. In 2003, he won the Bellagio Five Diamond World Poker Classic Omaha Eight or Better event. It's a mouthful. Most recently, he placed fourth in a World Series of Poker shorthanded event. It must have been in 2006. He has won five World Series bracelets total. Five is a lot of World Series bracelets for a youngish guy. I don't know how old Lane is. Actually, born in 1969, so what's that make him? 50? 50 is not so young anymore. I like Lane. I've played with Lane a few times. I met one of my employees at poker coaching, the Wizard, at Bay 101, sitting next to Lane Flack. We nicknamed Lane... Well, no, we nicknamed my uh, employee the Wizard because he literally got in there, battled hard, and uh, tried to win every pot. Cards kind of stick together. Ugh. What do I have next? Greg Raymer, again. Also born in South Dakota. These two were neighbors, born four years apart. Would you believe that? Two neighbors. Currently lives in Connecticut. Former attorney. He turned his 160 bucks satellite, went into $5 million. We already talked about Greg Raymer a bit. I think I played, played against Greg in the NBC Heads Up tournament back in the day. I think I won. I don't really remember. I think I won. He played overly loose aggressive. I remember he played like really lag. I think he called my all-in with like king five offsuit or something for like 25 big blinds or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's aggressive. He must think I'm insane. Nothing wrong with thinking people are insane, I suppose. We have next, oh boy, everyone's favorite, legend of the table. Men win. Men win. Been accused of cheating at poker multiple times. Let's see if they mention any of that here. Uh, Min the Master has been one of the most feared players in the game for almost 17 years due to him swapping chips with his friends. That doesn't say that. I'm making that up. Now, during his career, he has won more than 75 tournaments, although he has never won the main event of the World Series. As of 2006, he has over $6 million in live tournament earnings. A lot of tournament earnings. Six bracelets, 49 money finishes. Highest main event played is fourth place. Blah, blah, blah. Um... Min the Master was apparently caught in a hotel, rooming with a bunch of people, and they had duffel bags full of chips from all sorts of various casinos of uh, various denominations and poker tournaments. Don't be like Min the Win. He's kind of a jerk when you play with him, too. Am I allowed to talk bad about people? I don't really talk bad about people all that often, but um, he, I played with him a few times. He's always just like a real jerk. All right. What do we have next? We have... Gavin Smith. Gavin Smith no longer with us. Born in Ontario. Was living in Las Vegas. Gavin Smith, career tournament earnings. Two point seven million bucks. He's been playing poker for more than 16 years, like so many before him. Gavin was a poker dealer. And by 1998, he started his own poker room. All right. Early in his career, Eric Lindgren helped bankroll him. All right. And the rest is history. Eric Lindgren had sports betting issues due to having too much money from Full Tilt. His first major win was the 2000 World Poker Tour Finals, stud eight or better. In 2005, he won two events at the Mirage Showdown, including the main event. If you win one of those, let me show you what they give you. If you win the main event at Mirage, they give you this. How do I know? Because I won it the year after he won it. $10,000 buy-in, no limit hold'em championship, 2007. I was one year off from being on the cards. Brutal. I'm hoping to get a Jonathan Little card in these, but I haven't found one yet. So he won this a year before me. And he won a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, Gavin Smith no longer with us. I like Gavin Smith a lot. He was kind of abrasive, a little bit loud, but I like Gavin Smith. Uh, one more. Superstar Showdown. Superstar Showdown. Mike Matisau again. Mike Matisau. Apparently he likes to show it down with everybody. In 2005, in the Tournament of Champions, there was an epic battle. 
with a select field of 114 people. I didn't get to play. One of the most memorable final tables of 2005, Mike the Mouth Mattisau against Hoyt Corkins. Hoyt Hork Corkins, by the way, is my hiking buddy. Whenever I go to Vegas, I go hiking with Hoyt the Cowboy Corkins. Let's see, let's see. Uh, they played heads up, a million dollars up top. They played for two hours heads up before Mike finally captured the title. Ooh, you want to hear something fun here? Hoyt took second place. Mike Mattisau got a million bucks for winning. You know how much Hoyt got for second? You know how much Hoyt got for second? Mike got a million. Hoyt got 325000 That's a top-heavy poker tournament, if I've ever seen one. Million for first, 325 for second. Third was probably like 125 or something. There you go. Superstar showdown. Was there a 2007 edition? There was. I have a pack of 2007 cards. We'll open it because we have a few minutes left. This is the most bizarre product I've ever seen. I haven't seen a whole lot of poker trading card products to begin with, but this is a weird one. You want to know why this is a weird one? First off, look how big a regular card is, okay? This is a, a big, thick package. But you know how many cards are in this package? There's one. There's one card in this package. This is 2007 Razor Signature Series. Look for autographed cards. Because there's, there's one card in here. There's one card. Let's see what we get. This better be a good one. I'll tell you the other ones we got so far. We got, uh, we got Todd Brunson. You see Todd Brunson with signature Todd Brunson card? Can you see this? Yeah, we have Todd Brunson, and we have a dual sign card with Kathy Liebert and Jennifer Harmon. That's what we have so far from this. Who are we hoping for? Type in the chat who you're hoping for. You think it's going to be me in here? I don't think it's going to be me. As far as I know, I've never signed a trading card. Who are we hoping to get out of this package? I can guarantee you there's Phil Helmuth or uh, Dale Negreanu possible because they're on the cover. Who do we have? Who do we have? I think we're going to get this time... Ooh, I'd like to get a Doyle card. Doyle card would be cool. Ivy? I don't, I don't know if there are any Ivy cards. That doesn't seem like an Ivy type thing to do, but I would like to get an Ivy trading card. Phil Ivy signed card would be great. I think, I think it's going to be someone sporadic. Um, let's, let's throw out Amir Vahidi. I think I'm going to get an Amir Vahidi. Could you imagine if I gave me a Russ, Hansel, Russ Hamilton card or a Chris Ferguson card? That would be terrible. Let's see what we get. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? I'm going to show all of you before I actually get a look at it, okay? You see it? I'm not looking at this. I'm not looking at this. Oh, no, I saw the back. I saw the back. It's men the cheater win. <laughs> oh, my God. Congratulations. You've received an autograph signature series card. Wow. Here's our Men the Wind signature. That's okay. We still have Kathy Liebert and Todd Brunson. Okay? That's okay. We still have these. Well, I hope you all have a great day. Hope you enjoy the rest of the year. Oh, man, oh, man. What a way to end the year. It's good to get a little bad beat right at the end of the year, right? Take it. Enjoy it. Love it. Would you believe that card, that package of cards cost $12? I paid $12 to get a Men the Wind card that's now in the trash can. All right. Hope you all have a great, great day. Um, two days left in the holiday giveaway. We're giving away 10 $500 bankrolls for you. Check that out. Pokercoaching.com slash holiday giveaway. No, 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 no. Slash holiday cash. Pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. I think that's right. Also, we're having a holiday sale for Pokercoaching.com. If you like my content, if you enjoy my work, check it out. Pokercoaching.com slash holiday sale. If you like this show, click like. Click subscribe, click the notification buttons below. We're putting out a lot of content on YouTube currently. Um, put out about seven, seven videos a day. Hope you enjoy the seven videos a day. I know it's a lot. You don't have to watch all of them. Don't feel inclined to. Watch what you like. Don't watch what you don't like. Make the most of your experience. Good luck in your games. Have fun. 